I will admit that a combination of boredom and curiosity made me decide on Saturday night to sit down and watch the debut episode of AEW Collision. And while I have some concerns in the long term about AEW having yet another show to do, and in particular another two-hour show to do, and like the long-term viability and sustainability of a Saturday night show, I was going to check out at least the debut episode. And I can say that I'm relatively glad that I did, and I will be checking out next week's episode. So if you want to say that is a reflection of them doing some good things on the show, it's true. I thought they did. They gave me enough of a reason to want to tune in next week, and I will take that. Of course, the big story heading into this show was CM Punk's return. After being gone for, what was it, nine months, nine and a half months, whatever the heck it's been, what's CM Punk going to do? What's CM Punk going to say? What's he going to have to get off his chest? And he certainly didn't deliver. As I tweeted during the show, or during his promo segment to kick off the night, like, the energy in the crowd was tremendous because CM Punk was there. Be really curious to see how CM Punk is going to play in other spaces in the, in the coming weeks, other places. You know, I saw some people tweeting about this could be like a Bret Hart 97 thing, and it might be. He gets cheered mightily in some places, and he gets booed massively in other places. I will just say that I like this version of CM Punk best, the whiny, bitchy CM Punk, because that's the most believable, because that's fundamentally who the fuck he is. He's a malcontent. He is a fucking whiny crybaby. So it makes sense to go with that, right? And he certainly threw out some shots about how he was the one he was the one true bill in a business or a company full of counterfeit bucks. Ha 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 ha. But in all seriousness, the promo was pretty good. I w- will say I find it funny that of all people to talk about anybody being soft, CM Punk's got a lot of fucking nerve because if we keep it 100 here, CM Punk ultimately started whining because somebody went into business for themselves in a promo. Get fucking real. But the promo got the night off to a really hot start, so that, at least you could say, delivered. Then you came back, and it was the TNT title match between Luchasaurus and Wardlow. And I know I tweeted during during this match, it's fucking stupid they broke up the Jurassic Express, and I still stand by that. Because you had a boy and his dinosaur, should have included Caleb Coboroto in that fucking group so they could have had a caveman too. You could be beefed up your trios division. You could have done all types of things with it. But they went in this direction instead and it is whatever. And I could sit there and say, well, what's going to happen with Wardlow in the long term? He's got bigger fish to fry at Wembley. There's a young lion stalking him in the name of Goldberg. So everything else up to that point is just filler for Warlow at this point. You say, well, what if that doesn't happen? It's going to happen. It has to happen. God damn it. But Luchasaurus is the new TNT champion. And I'm 100% supportive of doing the title change here. Because you have to give people a reason to believe, especially on a debut show, that anything can happen. So if you come out here and you have a title match, and there's no title change, then people are going to be like, well, why the hell would I tune in? Because I don't feel like I'm going to miss anything. You're planting a seed that if you don't watch, you could miss something. So that, in and of itself, is why this match worked. And it was was an okay match. It wasn't great, I don't think. But, um, you know, a lot of people probably look at Buddy Matthews and Andre El Idolo as being a better match, but I didn't care. Um, You know, I'm still straining to find a reason to give a crap about Andrade, but clearly the fans that were there did. So I hope they can either manufacture a personality or gimmick for this guy, or they could give him a manager or something that could help kind of draw it out of him a little bit. Because the fans there clearly were behind him. He's just boring as shit. I'm sorry, he is. He needs some type of hook. He needs something. He needs some sizzle. Uh, what could really use some sizzle in terms of just throw it into the damn fire because it sucks and should be destroyed as a house of black. Malachi Black is a future single star, my fucking ass. Fucking odd-shaped head-looking motherfucker. 
Ah, seriously, what the fuck's the big deal about that faction? Nothing. They come out after the match and they attack Andrade. Okay, so what? Are we really going to buy that as a storyline? Which is probably one theme of this show that I'll talk about in a couple of moments. Miro's back and he looked good here. Wonder how long he'll be interested in care or Tony Khan will be interested in care about him before he goes back to not appearing. But, you know, at least having this other show, you got a place to feature a guy like Miro. I'm cool with that. Would have been nice to actually see Powerhouse Hobbs in action this week. Instead, you do that fucking interview backstage with him and QT Marshall. Exactly what the hell is QT Marshall bringing to Powerhouse Hobbs? Why can't Hobbs just be on his own? I don't fucking get it. And if you say, well, he's not great on the mic, he's passable. And that's good enough. Let the guy learn his shit. Give him consistent opportunities. Ugh, whatever. Uh, the women's tag match, you know, I know you got a, a, a bunch of guys that love their milk or were looking at Sky Blue and Tony Storm and were probably drooling all over themselves last night. I'm looking at you, Ty. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I was saying, well, Sky Blue's the Chicago girl. Let her get the win here. And they actually fucking did. Now, I'm watching Willow Nightingale more. It's more of my flavor. But, you know, hey, it is whatever. Does this really lead to anything? I don't know. Again, is there any reason to care about the women's division or the women's wrestlers in AEW? Not really. Not really. The Acclaim came out and just did Acclaim stuff, and that's totally fine. It was cheeky fun. I'm sitting there looking at badass Billy Gunn, and I'm saying, this motherfucker will be 60 in November. 60! The hell am I doing wrong in my damn life? That dude is almost 60 damn years old. He's getting closer to his physical peak all the time. And he's being fired up and raring to go when it comes to all in in a couple of months, as he should be. But not everything's got to be so buttoned down and serious. It's okay in wrestling to have some fun. And scissor me daddy ass. And especially at the end there where they got Shivani in there. It's okay to have some fucking cheeky fun. And they did. And it worked. And the acclaim are still massively over. Good segment. You know, because one of the things you're talking about with this show is energy. And this show had plenty of energy throughout the night. That was good. We'll see if that sustains and continues. But for the first week, well done. And then you got the main event, which is CMFTR versus Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Samoa Joe. It was really nice how they played into the uh, history, you know, two decades old history between CM Punk and Samoa Joe. Like the crowd really felt that. That really resonated. Um, the match was solid. You know, again, I'm not the biggest like, hey, all the moves. Da, 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 da. I don't care about all this shit. I care about the things that actually, you know, draw more interest and draw more eyeballs, which is not necessarily the matches and the moves in and of themselves. Um, but CM Punk goes over, which should be no big surprise. Of course he was going to. He's back. They're in Chicago. He was going over. We all damn good and well know it. So that was pretty predictable, right? Um, but predictable isn't always bad because sometimes predictable is very logical. And it certainly was here. So, again, I will come back to this. This was a decent show to watch. It really was. It... Had good vibe throughout the night. Had really good flow and pacing too. Like it did not feel like the raging out of control dumpster fire that Dynamite is a lot of weeks. And that's probably because there's no influence from the elite. Like this felt more like the type of wrestling show that was sustainable that you could really enjoy. That said, as much as I like the vibe and the flow and the pacing and the structure of the show, the mix within this show... One knock I have on it is that when you talk about, yeah, it got me to want to tune in next week, but that was more based off of the flow and the pacing and the vibe of the show as much as anything. What do you have long term to care about? It didn't feel like you really got a single true storyline coming out of it. And some of you are going to go to the comments and probably be really reaching and you're really reaching here because it really wasn't. Now, it's okay for week one that they didn't do it, but they're going to have to rectify that relatively soon. Um, 
But wrestling just doesn't have to be that hard. And AEW Collision this week was an example of how if you don't overcomplicate it, you could do a decent job. Uh, side note, I really wish JR wouldn't have been there. Like He sounded rough. Looks like he's going to take time away to heal. Good for him. He needs it. Um, Nigel McGuinness, Kevin Kelly. That was a good commentary team. Without the in incessant blabberings of Taz or Excalibur. Like that, that shit was good, right? Am I off here? Like Just to have competent commentary was a huge win to me. So, there were some things I really liked about Collision, and I hope it continues. There's some things they'll have to focus on as they go forward. But for now, one week in, it was good. I'm assuming it probably got like 800, 850,000 viewers, which is going to be the ironic thing. I expect in the long term that this show will be better structured, better paced, have a better flow to it, be more logical, and yet we'll get less viewers than Dynamite on Wednesday night, which is going to be one of those really weird dynamics to play out in the weeks ahead.